All right, let's start. So this is talking the digital transformation enterprise track supported by Aquin. And we're going to be talking about managing digital service data streams with Drupal 8 Migrate API. And um, first, let's introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Jari Nozhen. I'm the Drupal competence lead at Sealy Solutions. Sealy uh, is a Finnish consultancy comp company with about 660 employees currently. We are based in Finland, and we also have offices in uh, Poland, Germany, and the United States. And my co-speaker, Anu Mätä, please. Uh, yeah, I'm Anu Mätä. I've been work with Sealy for about two years now. I'm working as Drupal developer doing Drupal, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, as well as service manager. And for the past year or so, I've been working with this migrate uh, uh, a few mi migration projects, so uh, we're pr I'm presenting a couple of the CAPE studies here. Yeah. So, um, the structure will be this. Uh, I will first line out uh, what is the idea that we have been, or the use cases that we've been working with. Then I will do a quick migrate API overview so that you know the technical background, wha what's it all based on. Then Anu will present some case examples that the work she's actually been doing, and then we'll do a quick lessons learned section in the end. So the idea is that when you build a larger website uh, for an enterprise or a big organization, there's always some kind of backend data systems that you need to source data from and you need to be able to integrate that data into your system. And there are master data systems or APIs or something. So um, we have found the Drupal Migrate API, a good tool for that. And we'll present you some cases on that. So um, here are some exa examples on, on what we found that uh, are the uh, that is the information that you need to often integrate. It can be products, services. It could even be e-commerce e solutions. We're not going to talk about e-commerce at this point because it's it would be a topic for a separate talk. It's such a large issue. There can be ERPs, enterprise resource planning software, maybe pl publishing pl platforms, and all kinds of master data systems. And the, there can be several systems, of course, for one site. And our solutions are based on the idea that you can use to connect uh, all kinds of things. So here's some, some, ex some examples that we worked with. We worked with social media. There have, has been uh, product information, all kinds of databases that we interface with APIs. Um, so the cases we'll talk about today, uh, the first one is about exposing an organization's offering, uh, their products and services on their public website. The data is stored uh, in a separate service, but it needs to be displayed on the website. And then the second case will be about interacting and building a presence in the social media and on your own website, uh, and uh, with the angle that you need to have your own, own styles applied to the social media content. And the third case is about moving data inside an enterprise architecture where you have several systems. And data or content needs to move, move between those. So to get a bit, a bit of depth on the first case, we had a government agency in Finland that has uh, various pro products and services that they provide to the general public and to other government agencies, companies, and other organizations. Mm. We, we needed to list on the public website, we needed to list their products that are they can be digital or they can be 
physical products, something printed out or uh, something made or services done in the real world. But so fir the first case was to actually list the products on the website. And then we had another case where they have a mm, price information system and they wanted, the, wanted us to build the price list on the website. Mm. They have a separate master data system uh, with JSON and XML interfaces. And those, uh, we took the data out of through those. And then uh, what well, is also important to notice that we didn't do, that this is not an e-commerce solution, so that the sales and billing goes through other system, other channels. So we just built a presentation and kind of a public listing that is required for, actually required by law for, for the prices to be on there. And then the second case, it was that there's a um, social media presence for on, for on different social media for a company. Uh, and when you post social media content on your own site, it would alwa always be very nice to have it branded with your own site and not have the uh, Facebook or other branding and styles on the posts so that it fits your other news content in one stream. But still, you need to be able, the, the users need to be able to engage directly with the, with the content, so, so links need to, work, need to work right and all that. And then the third case is that there's often a case to a requirement that data needs to move outside, uh, outwards from Drupal. Because there can be several sites, there can be Drupal sites, there can be other CMSs, there can be other systems completely that the Drupal site needs to submit information to. So uh, what we worked with was a client who had a requirement that uh, another, te another team and our company was building a new site, not in Drupal, for the client, but they wanted the uh, Drupal sites to be able to push content into the new site. So, so they requested that we build a connector for moving s content from Drupal uh, via REST APIs to the, to the new sites. So we needed to have expertise on both sides because uh, we needed to be able to build or modify the API, API on the receiving end. And um, then, of course, we needed to build the connector from Drupal. And what we actually realized while doing this is that this is al also a strategy that we can offer a full service to our clients. Although we, n we never want our clients to leave Drupal, but in case they do, we can serve them to the very end. So we build a site with them, and they use it for some years, and then maybe they decide to move on. So what we built here can also serve as a kind of exit strategy for, for CMS. So Migrate API can do all this because it's a framework that can fetch, process, and save, or update data. And it is built on reusable components. And it is very easy to interface with databases, static files, or APIs. So I will give a quick overview on what is Migrate API just in case somebody is still not uh, familiar with it. So basically, this, the first sentence, uh, it's kind of idea that uh, what Migrate API on a general level is that it is, it is a service in Drupal. 
that can take and process and transmit data into Drupal. That's the normal use case. It was built for migrating sites from dr older Drupal versions initially into Drupal 8. But it can be used to get information from anywhere into Drupal 8. And it does also work the other way around. So Migrate API migration is an ETL process, extract, transform, and load. And in Migrate API terminology, we have phases called source, process, and destination. First, the source. Uh, what we have implemented in the source phase includes authentication and fetching data from leg legacy systems, ERPs, or other master data. We have also, of course, done cases where we use directly some external database and obviously REST APIs, XML feeds, CSV files, uh, JSON, JSON files. And then, actually, the process, uh, process phase is the next one. And it's actually the place where, where most of the magic happens, so to say. Um, you can actually restructure the content or the data because often it might not be useful to have the content model the same or exactly the same in, in Drupal database as you have in the, in the source data. Uh, you can also enrich data. You can add stuff into it, add more information. You can combine it to other sources. You can have several feeds at, that the process phase then merges in, in into one, oh, into the Drupal content model. And you can, you can make it work as a continuous process where the updates, uh, where there'll be updates, updates to the com content so that when the data changes on the source, then of course the data will also change on your Drupal database. And it's actually very easy for, for any Drupal developer or even any D PHP developer to implement their own, own plugins in the process phase where they just get the source data and manipulate it as needed and it becomes a configure process plugin. And there are also, also there are already several plugins available in both Drupal core and in contrib modules. And then finally, there's the destination. And by default, that is, of course, a Drupal 8 content entity. It could be a node, it could be a custom entity, it can be basically anything. You can import taxonomies, whatever. But then you can also have the custom, uh, custom destinations that can be external services. They could be other sites, databases. Uh, they can be basically whatever inside Drupal 8. If you have built something custom, custom entities in Drupal, then you can migrate into those. And you can have APIs as the destination too. So virtually any, any structured data source can be used. And in this, this model, of course, whatever you can, you can digest, you can put into Drupal. So next, Anu will tell about some of the work she's been doing on the actual cases. Uh, yeah. So uh, to recap the case examples we're using uh, or presenting here today um, are the product catalog, uh, which is a ma um, master data system with product price, uh, including price information, in our case, both in Finnish and Swedish, as these are official languages that the government agency needs to use. Uh, the second case is the um, importing social media fees or Sealy's social media presence into the Sealy.com website. And the third case is providing outward connections from Drupal to other systems. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, oh, okay, uh, here we go. Um, so, uh, 
for the product catalog, the point really is uh, mapping the com complex business logic uh, from the customer's master data system into a logical uh, presentation in Drupal. Um, and for this, we use input configuration mainly and foremost, mainly this is done with, with the inverted configuration. As Yari outlined, uh, the magic is in the configuration. Um, uh, we'll get to a few more details in a bit. Uh, what we really need to map is the, what, uh, the atomic level of data, what is atomic level in the master data system might not be what's logical to represent in Drupal uh, on the atomic level, be it entity or node. So for instance, we are not showing individual prices of the products that are in the master data system, but we show collections of them as Drupal entities. And the point really is that we are enriching existing content with this new integration and we're continuously uh, importing the price information so it's not one off like migrations might be thought of. It's continuous uh, every now and then, every six months or every year. Um, but uh, with the amount of information that they have, it's, it is not feasible to do, continue to do manually. Um, Maybe a bit more sense uh, comes from images. So uh, we have the master data system um, uh, with uh, pricing, uh, but uh, also um, products are categorized in, as you might have in any um, any catalog of products. So we have prices, products, and there are a couple of layers with categorizing the items. Um, as made master data system uh, for us is immutable. We cannot change it. We cannot really change what we get out of it. So for that reason, first and foremost, we need an API layer, something that formats the content from the master data system into something that we can better receive in Drupal and with that we can process with the migration tools. Um, okay. Um, Also, uh, yeah, we need the API because the data is immutable and also for the mold it better to suit the Drupal needs. Uh, for processing step here, uh, that's uh, the migration part. In the next slide, there's a couple of more details, not too many because this is a business-oriented uh, presentation. And the end goal, obviously, is that we display the information that comes from migration. So the different level, uh, different color boxes, or we dif display that as part of the existing entities on of the site. A uh, couple of uh, migration points and takeaways. Uh, so we are basing based basing everything on the core uh, migrate API and the migrate plugins. Uh, with uh, also making use of existing migration plugins, uh, both source um, process that have been developed for this pro project or for other migrations. A um, couple of more complex points for this uh, particular case were that we extensively needed to query the data both uh, within the migration. So refer looking up things that were migrated during the same run running of the migration. So, um, for instance, if we have a um, price catalog item, that does a category, so the category might have, be, might have to be looked up uh, during the migration. Another thing is the translations that we need to map while we're migrating new content. Um, also, uh, we need to be able to look up existing data as we are integrating to existing uh, Drupal entities. We need to look up what we're migrating into. Um, so um, the magic really is in the configuration, as Yari said. So everything, all the com complex mapping between the entities in the API and the Drupal uh, uh, destination entities uh, are mapped in the in the um, sorry, pro processing stage, and uh, and uh, actual PHP code we only need for field level transformations, and for both of the, for these um, field level transformations, existing plugins are extensively used. 
so uh, the second case study the point is that we're fetching information from external sources, uh, importing that as part of the um, uh, um, main uh, website. Also here, uh, we are trying, we are making use of existing labor libraries and APIs where possible. Uh, also, um, informa import importer configuration and the API endpoints are only config for us. We are not making custom BHP code to interface with the uh, social media APIs, or we are not writing our own uh, libraries for interfacing with the APIs. Um, and uh, as Yari said, uh, we, are, well, um, we have a custom entity that is themable that we uh, import the content into that we can use as any Drupal entity. And the point really is that we're getting information from the outside and displaying that as part of the website. Um, uh, this is the how, how uh, let's say, a brief demo how it should look like. So social media wall, we have some uh, Twitter posts, we have some LinkedIn posts, we have some native Drupal content there in the mix. So all of this, uh, the rest is displayed with the regular Drupal ways of displaying content. We just have a custom entity that goes into the mix and is, is displayed in the same view as the rest of the content. A brief outline. Um, so right now um, we are using two APIs mainly, Open Graph for Facebook and Twitter, uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, and Twitter's own API uh, for the Twitter, Twitter feeds. Um, uh, we are actually not wrapping our own uh, SDKs. We're using Graph SDK for the open graph things, so Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, OAuth for Twitter. So these are PHP libraries that are in use, uh, in large, largely used elsewhere as well. Um, and, and we're not actually also directly using these APIs. We're using them where the migration configuration. So again, not writing our own custom PHP for the most part, um, making use of the configuration and referring to using these libraries for the source and process stages of the processing. And the outcome is the, well, the social media mixed content with our Drupal content. Um, Again, here uh, we're following as far as possible the regular migration process. So you have your source, a process, and destination. Um, um, we're in the source. We are defining API endpoints, uh, the API methods we use, and also the parameters. None of this is in the PHP. Um, for authentication, we, are, we wrote our own OAuth plugin, but again, it is making use of the existing OAuth. Uh, um, library, but the capability is made available by the libraries that we're using. Uh, for process, again, we are using Migrate Plus and, uh, uh, well, existing plugins, uh, and um, then uh, using the external libraries with the custom Twitter, custom Twitter and Open Graph API calls. Um, media asset handling uh, in the migration, we can. Uh, Let's say we have, on one of the migrations, we have only a reference to a media asset. But in the migration process, we are able to look up um, the ID of the entity and also then import the actual asset. So these are the kinds of things that um, are, were a learning process that came up during the process of developing this migration. And then for the destination, uh, we have a custom entity type the um, base and that's extended for the spe specific social media services. So a little wrap up. Um, we aimed to make the social media importing extensible. So we're using a standard migration process, source, process, destination, nothing special there. Um, we are making use of available PHP libraries and making use of uh, um, existing Migrate Plus plugins. So uh, if adding a new service, so let's say we have LinkedIn that we would like to add. It's in the pipeline, actually. Uh, it's just about uh, we have to add the migration configuration, defining the API endpoints, 
uh, and the methods and the parameters. Um, if there's any custom field level processing, we might have to write a custom plugin, or we can see if use existing um, existing microprocess or our own existing plugins. Um, and then uh, if the social media, new social media service needs some specific fields or some, has some special needs that differ from the others, you can, you can extend the base social media uh, entity type and add the fields that you need and the information that you need to it. And obviously then you can theme the social media, new social media entity type to your needs or to your brand's needs. And now I hand it over. Yes, so um, then the third case was about the uh, outward connection or posting data to another s system, uh, not Drupal. And um, so uh, what we did was that we made, a, we created a migration system that then uses a connector to post data to another CMS API. And for this kind of system, there will be different use cases or different endpoints and different formats for the data. So it also needs to be extendable and modular. And it is also, it's a requirement that there are APIs available, of course, on the target system. So uh, we created a custom source plugin that was based uh, maybe somewhat loosely, but still it was based on Drupal to Drupal migration migration code. And like in when like when importing data into Drupal, we do content mapping in the process phase, and then the destination plugin uh, takes the mapped data and it passes the uh, data over to the, to the receiving end as objects. And then uh, to achieve that, we created a service that posts data to the APIs. And here's kind of a simple schematic for that. Uh, we have the Drupal source, we do processing where we map the content, and then in a way the pass through, uh, the, the destination is kind of a pass through because I wanted to highlight that there is a separate service that acts is, is the actual connector that knows about the destination or the receiving end's API, that the destination is basically a plugin that calls the service and then inserts the data, data objects in there. But of course it should be, in, in practice it can be thought that the connector is actually part of the destination plugin. And um, uh, one thing to note here, is that uh, when the content changes on, on the Drupal sites, then we also update the data on the receiving end that, uh, of course, using Drupal hooks. So um, we originally promised some ideas if you want to start building something like that. So what we have learned is that there's always a need to work with different API endpoints and combine the data from those to make, uh, make, to get whole data sets from combining different aspects. And then, uh, the y then you need to build the presentable uh, or the presentation layer, presentation layer uh, formats from from those responses. And then. Of course, one major consideration is to think about the data model and presentation and those their relations. Because the migration process or the migration as a whole, it acts as an acts as an interpreter between a, the API and Drupal content, whichever the uh, data flows, whichever way the data flows to, and and the API, of course, uh, it just provides an interface to the data it is serving. So you will need to think about Drupal's data structure 
so that it actually serves the purpose of what your site needs. It needs to be something that you can display on the site, that you want to display on the site. And then there is whatever you get from the master data, you need to make that fit in your content model. So the migration process is that mapping function and that uh, mechanism of transforming the data. And it is a good idea to use uh, taxonomies to uh, move the separate the met metadata so you can categorize information and uh, uh, and let's say uh, configure the views or uh, control the display of the information on on the site. So and then another one that Anu was actually talking about a lot is that uh, you should really use existing solutions and this uh, this method really provides you a way to do that. Um, we used a lot of existing PHP SDKs, uh, libraries for different social media services and uh, um, and well of course existing community provided and core provided uh, migration plugins. Uh, and we're lucky with PHP because it supports all, all kinds of different formats. It's easy to read XML, well, fairly easy. Reading F XML is always quite a lot of work, but still it is straightforward. And uh, of course all CSVs, JSON, whatever is supported. And, and you should really avoid writing a lot of code, but you should try to work with the existing plugins because it will save you a lot of time. And if you need to write a lot of code, you should really try to make it modular so that, so that you can combine different plugins. Don't write one plugin that does everything you need, but write parts and then write once, use many times. That's always the rule in everything in development. Um, And when you're thinking about how you're going to get uh, the presentation presentation si side uh, together, you should remember that Drupal supports uh, custom entity types really well. You shouldn't be limited to nodes. You should remember that you can create entity types for your needs that you can import into. And then uh, as far as you can go, if you don't, if if your need is not just to enter some data into existing Drupal structure, and you can uh, you can maybe like we did, create new custom entity type that is then combined into existing entity types, then you can plan the structure so that you can have the uh, structure mod model uh, close enough the source data and still make it si simple so that uh, so that it's manageable in the in the presentation layer because master data systems and ERPs and all those they tend to be very complicated and even fragmented and you need to combine information from several places and you don't want that on your Drupal sites so as as much as you can offload that complication in in the migration funnel then it will be easier for you to, to manage your site actually in the end. And when this kind of process is being developed, it is in important that the actual developers who are implementing the, the structure, that they understand what the master data is and how it's structured and why whichever information comes from each endpoint so that they are able to make the content model so that it works and it's usable and and they can actually achieve what is needed. So if you're not the developer, but an architect or uh, project manager or, or the client, then please help developers understand what the data is and why it's like that. Um, these are more of uh, practical ideas that uh, 
there needs to be also somebody always involved who knows the source API or the destination API if you're going that way. Because if the need really is to get the flow working as well as possible, then it's really annoying to tr have to work with something static and something fixed that cannot be changed and cannot answer to the needs that the importer is going to, going to have. So the API sh should, should be considered to, if, if it's possible to work with the API to create new endpoints to modify how it works, then it should be made to answer all the specific use cases that integration will need. And uh, one thing that needs also extra thought is that because migration always works with the data it gets. We get a set of data and we can import that. But if something is removed in the master data, then we don't get that. So we don't know about that in the migration phase. So what you need to do actually depends on how you manage your master data or how the client manages their master data. But there are several, uh, several ways to approach uh, the uh, sort of the problem of removing or hiding content when it's being uh, deleted or uh, removed or unpublished in the, in the source system. And actually the exporting function we, we implemented, it does the same kind of updating when content is deleted in Drupal. So that is actually easier in that direction to handle. But when we have the situation where we just don't have the entry in the, in the source data, then we have to have some kind of mechanism that will check the data and check it against what we have in the database and then react accordingly. And uh, then the last point is that when you're starting to build something like that with the client, do remind them that if they want something imported into the existing content, they will have to do manual work. It, you can never eliminate that. It's, it's always going to be there. And uh, I don't know how much manual work was involved in the, in the price migration. Well, not that much. It was, it was reasonable. So it might not be that much, but they will need to prepare for that. Okay, so that's all from us. Thank you for listening, and if you have some questions, we have uh, some time. Oh, yeah, no, and one point is that the two last case examples, are we have plans to make them open source, so if, um, if there is interest, uh, of you may feel free to follow us on Twitter to get some updates. Timeless line is not defined, but um, this is the plan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any question? Hello. Uh, oh. How heavy is the migration process, and uh, how frequently should you be updating content using Migrate API? Like every every uh, hour or every night or every minute? Okay. Well, that in the end actually depends on on the business needs. I think in these cases that we presented. Uh, we are updating the product information daily or nightly, so it's once in once in a day. But then, then again, for example, the the export function functionality it is updating the data as soon as it it changes, but it is only doing a small small change at a time. Then and the product import uh, product information importer is dealing with uh, some hundreds of items uh, in whole. But it takes a couple of minutes to ru run if the import imported data is, data uh, is large. Yeah, for the product, inf uh, we are not, uh, the needs are not to update it. Uh, uh, like, uh, it's like more rarely time. updated, mm -hmm. but there are plenty of products and we need to process maybe a sub um, 10,000 products and we need to process or import about 500 of them. There's some, something we can left, leave out. Uh, as for the social media APIs, uh, obviously the social media streams have some um, control, I mean, um, limits to API use. And obviously if um, it depends also, again, 
on the specs that you have. If you have a social media presence heavy website, you might have to import it very often. If you have a corporate website, you might be okay with like every now and then, every hour, every day. Depends on the specs. But yeah. the me social media API well, should not be that heavy because all the API handles getting only the newest updates and the change information. Yeah, so we're getting like 15 latest posts and that's just okay to run every minute. Two more? This might be getting into <laughs> technical details, but uh, how easy it is to apply some kind of filters in the, this import? If, for example, you want to e exclude every retweets or uh, Facebook posts containing uh, buzzwords or something. Yeah, that I that is actually just the idea of the how the importer works. Like Anu just said that uh, in the price importer we have about 10,000 items and we only want to display around 500 of those publicly. So there is some, some property that we filter by in the migrate process. And if, it's, if it hits the filter, then we just skip it. And also uh, for the social media case, it depends on how you use the API. So what the API offers, we can use. So it dep and that it depends on how you spec it, what you want out of the API and what the API can provide. Has a question? Uh, hi. Uh, what would you say that are the biggest uh, benefits of using Migrate API in, instead of like directly reading the data from source dynamically? Well, uh, the configurability is one, and we have done uh, several implementation based on Migrate API. So we have the process plugins available. We can transform the data in the sim in a similar way in several different cases. So we don't need to implement that again because we can use the Migrate API plugins. And uh, so what we actually can very far go by is just write new YAML configuration files instead of instead of making p more PHP code. Uh, maybe for the social media case, one important thing for us for us that uh, if you use the dynamic options or existing plug modules, you might not be able to brand it as you wish or use, it, use the data as you want to use the data or to suit your needs and display as part of the regular Drupal content. So it might be a block that you have to just put somewhere, but then you have the rest of the news somewhere else or display it some, some other way. So I think that was one of the main. One of the points. I would add the modularity and uh, reuse of code. Yes. Another question? So the time is uh, over. So thank you all for attending. And yeah. thank you, Anna and, and Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and please, everybody, remember tomorrow there is contribution sprints from 9 a.m. Everybody, welcome. I will be there mentoring, and you don't have to code to attend. Thank you. <laughs>